In this tutorial, we will help you connect your Bond to your Sputnik server. With Bond connected to your Sputnik, you will be able to send high-definition video streams utilizing multiple cellular connections. In this tutorial, you will need your Bond encoder, Sputnik address, a computer, and internet connection. My Bond is accessing the internet by connecting to a wireless network. Next, I'm going to configure my Bond using the Terra Central app on my computer. My computer is connected to the same network as Bond. Click Configure Settings. The password is Admin. Go to Video Setup and Stream Settings. Click the Configure button to enter Sputnik information. Enter your Sputnik host public IP address. By default, all Sputniks are configured to listen on port 5111. This is your Sputnik port. By default, Sputnik protocol is set to TCP. See our TCP versus UDP tutorial for more information about these transport methods. AI streaming, which stands for Adaptive Internet Streaming, is automatically enabled. It is recommended to have this option selected unless you are certain that your max bitrate is always available. The max bitrate is based on the available bandwidth of your internet connection. Please see the Optimizing Sputnik tutorial for tips on selecting the appropriate bitrate for your application. The max buffer length will also depend on available bandwidth and network connectivity. If the max buffer length is set low, you will need more available bandwidth and more consistent network speed. If the max buffer length is set higher, while your video will have more latency, it will be less demanding of a consistent, fast bandwidth connection. The information provided in the Sputnik dashboard will help you decide the most optimal buffer length. Redundancy is designed to allow for lower latency despite inconsistent cellular network behavior. Higher redundancy increases the amount of duplicate data sent to Sputnik, while this will improve reliability of the video stream in low latency situations, it does reduce the bandwidth available, which may limit the quality of the stream. Again, determining your settings will depend on your available bandwidth. Apply settings. Your Sputnik should list your address and port configuration. The next set of configuration refers to the outbound settings of Sputnik. Stream application. Live internet streaming is available for streaming to popular CDNs such as Ustream and Livestream. RTMP server is used to send streams to other CDNs or personal servers. MPEG transport stream is used when hosting a stream on your Sputnik. This allows decoders back at your station to pull down the video stream from the server. Stream server is used to host the video feed on a public IP address. This way, Clients and other devices, like decoders, computers, or switchers, can pull the feed by entering the public IP address. Along with the public IP address, you will need to set the outbound listening port. By default, the listening port is set to 5000. You can customize this, however, it must not be the same as the inbound listening port, which in this tutorial was set to the default, 5111. Also, for every bond on the server, this outbound listening port must be different for each stream. Max clients allows you to limit the amount of clients accessing the stream. In transport stream push settings, Sputnik will actively send the video stream to a specified IP address. For example, let's say you have a cube or a slice decoder in your studio. Sputnik can directly push the video feed to your studio's public IP address and decoder. This is often used if you are sending to a single destination or specified network. Again, you can choose which protocol to send your feed. Enter the destination IP address along with the IP address's inbound listening port. Click Apply. For further or advanced technical support, email support at teradec.com. For more information about Teradec, visit teradec.com.